Room on the Broom by Julia Donaldson. The witch had a cat and a hat that was black, and long ginger hair in a braid down her back. How the cat purred and how the witch grinned as they sat on the broomstick and flew through the wind. But how the witch wailed and how the cat spat when the wind blew so wildly it blew off the hat. Down! cried the witch and they flew to the ground. They searched for the hat, but no hat could be found. Then out of the bushes on thundering paws there bounded a dog with a hat in his jaws. He dropped it politely, then eagerly sat as the witch pulled the hat firmly down on her head. I'm a dog, as keen as can be. Is there room on the broom for a dog like me? Yes, cried the witch and the dog clambered on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. Over the fields and the forest they flew. The dog wagged his tail and the stormy wind blew. The witch laughed out loud and held on to her hat. But away blew the bow from the braid, just like that. Down, cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for the bow, but no bow could be found. Then out from a tree with an ear-splitting shriek, there flapped a green bird with a bow in her beak. She dropped it politely and bent her head low, then sat as the witch tied her braid in the bow. I am a bird, as green as can be. Is there room on the broom for a bird like me? Yes, cried the witch, so the bird fluttered on. The witch tapped the broomstick, and whoosh, they were gone. Over the reeds and the rivers they flew. The bird shrieked with glee, and the stormy wind blew. They shot through the sky to the back of beyond. The witch clutched her bow, but let go of the wand. Down, cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for the wand, but no wand could be found. Then all of a sudden from out of a pond leaped a dripping wet frog with a dripping wet wand. He dropped it politely, then sat with a croak, as the witch tried the wand on a fold of her cloak. I am a frog, as clean as can be. Is there room on the broom for a frog like me? Yes, cried the witch, so the frog bounded on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. Over the moors and the mountains they flew. The frog jumped for joy, and the broom snapped in two. Down fell the cat and the dog and the frog. Down they went tumbling into a bog. The witch's half-broomstick flew into the cloud, and the witch heard a roar that was scary and loud. I am a dragon, as mean as can be, and witch with French fries tastes delicious to me cried the witch, flying higher and higher. The dragon flew after her, breathing out fire. Help! cried the witch, flying down to the ground. She looked all around, but no help could be found. The dragon drew near with a gleam in his eyes and said, Just this once I'll have witch without fries. But just as he planned to begin on his feast, from out of a ditch rose a horrible beast. It was tall, dark and sticky and feathered and furred. It had four frightful heads. It had wing like a bird. And its terrible voice, when it started to speak, was a yawl and a growl and a croak and a shriek. It dripped and it squelched as it strove from the ditch. And it said to the dragon, Buzz off, that's my witch. The dragon drew back and he started to shake. I'm sorry, he sputtered. I made a mistake. It's nice to have met you, but now I must fly and he spread out his wings and was off through the sky. Then down flew the bird, and down jumped the frog, down climbed the cat, and pooh, said the dog. And thank you, oh, thank you, the grateful witch cried. Without you, I'd be in that dragon's inside. Then she filled up her cauldron and sat with a green. Find something, everyone, throw something in. So the frog found a lily, the cat found a cone, the bird found a twig, and the dog found a bone. They threw them all in, and the witch stirred them well. And while she was stirring, she muttered a spell. Eggity, ziggity, zaggity, zoom! Then out rose a truly magnificent broom, with seats for the witch and the cat and the dog, a nest for the bird and a pool for the frog. Yes, cried the witch, and they all clambered on. The witch tapped the broomstick, and whoosh, they were gone. The end of Snail and a Whale
by Julia Donaldson. This is the tale of a tiny snail and a great big great blue humpback whale. This is the rock, as black as soot, and this is a snail with an itchy foot. This is snail slithered all over the rock and gazed at the sea at the ships in the dock. And as she gazed, she sniffed and sighed, Oh, the sea is deep and the world is wide, how I long to sail, said the tiny snail. These are the other snails in the flock stuck tight to the smooth black rock and said to the snail with the itchy foot Shh! Be quiet! Don't wiggle! Sit still! Stay put! But the tiny sea snail sniffed and sighed then cried I've got it! I'll hitch a lift! This is the trail of the tiny snail a silvery trail that looped and curled and said Lift wanted around the world this is the whale who came one night when the tide was high and the stars were bright. A humpback whale, immensely long, who sang to the snail a wonderful song of shimmering eyes and coral caves and shooting stars and enormous waves. And this is the tale of the humpback whale. He held it out of the starlit sea and said to the snail, Come, sail with me. This is the sea, so wild and free, that carried the whale and the snail on his tail to towering icebergs and far-off lands with fiery mountains and golden sands. These are the waves that arched and crushed, that foamed and frolicked and sprayed and splashed the tiny snail on the tail of the whale. These are the caves beneath the waves where colorful fish with feathery fins and sharks with hideous toothy greens swam past the whale and the snail on his tail. This is the sky, so vast and high, sometimes sunny and blue and warm, sometimes filled with a thunderstorm, with a zigzag lightning flashing and frightening. The tiny snail on the tail of the whale. And as she gazed at the sky, the sea, the land, the waves, and the caves, and the golden sand, she gazed and gazed, amazed by it all. And she said to the whale, Oh, I feel so small. But then come the day, the whale lost his way. These are the speedboats, running a race, zigging and zooming all over the place upsetting the whale with their ear-splitting roar, making him swim too close to the shore. This is the tide slipping away, and this is the whale lying beached in a bay. Quick, off the sand, back to the sea, cried the snail. I can't move on land, I'm too big, moaned the whale. The sail felt helpless and terribly small, then, I've got it, she cried, and started to crawl. I must not fail, said the tiny snail. This is the bell on the school in the bay, ringing the children in from their play. This is the teacher holding a chalk, telling the class, sit straight, don't talk. This is the board as black as soot, and this is the snail with the itchy foot. A snail, a snail! The teacher turns pale. Look, said the children, it's leaving a trail. This is the trail of the tiny snail, a silvery trail, saying, save the whale. These are the children running from school, fetching the firemen, digging a pool, squirting and spraying to keep the whale cool. This is the tide coming in to the bay. And these are the villagers shouting hooray! And the whale and the snail travel safely away, back to the dog and the flock on the rock, who said, How time's flown, and haven't you grown? And the whale and the snail told their wonderful tale of shimmering eyes and coral caves and shooting stars and enormous waves, and of how the snail, so small and frail, with her looping, curling, silvery trail, saved the life of the humpback whale.
again, the humpback whale held out his tail. And on crawled snail after snail after snail. And they sank to the sea as they all set sail on the tail of the gray blue humpback whale. The end. Stickman by Julia Donaldson. Stickman lives in the family tree with his stick lady love and the stick children three. One day he wakes early and goes for a joke. Stickman, oh Stickman, beware of the dog. A stick, barks the dog. An excellent stick. The right kind of stick for my favorite trick. I'll fetch it and drop and fetch it and then... I'll drop it and fetch it and drop it again. I'm not a stick. Why can't you see I'm stick man? Stick man, stick man, that's me. And I want to go home to the family tree. And Otis says dogs must be kept on the lead. At last, the game's over and stick man is freed. He sets off for home with a hop and a twirl. Stick man, oh stick man, beware of the girl. A stick cries a girl with a smile on her face, the right kind of poo stick for winning the race. Has everyone got one? Get ready to throw. It's one, two, three, into the river they go. I'm not a poo stick, why can't they see? I'm stick man, I'm stick man, I'm stick man. That's me, and I'm heading away from the family tree. Stickman is floating, he floats on and on. Stickman, oh Stickman, beware of the swan. A twig, says the swan. This twig is the best, the right kind of twig to weave into my nest. I'm not a twig, why can't they see I'm Stickman? I'm Stickman, I'm Stickman, that's me, and long to be back in the family tree. The nest is deserted and Stickman is free. He drifts down the river and sails out to sea. He tosses and turns till the frockling foam washes him up on the beach far from home. Here comes a dad, a spade in his hand. Stickman, oh Stickman, beware of the sand. A must, yells the dad, an excellent must, hooray, there's a flag on our castle at last. I'm not a must for a silly old flag, or a sword for a knight, or a hook for a bag. I'm not a pen, I'm not a bow, I'm not a bat, or a boomerang, no, I'm... Stick man, oh stick man, beware of the snow. Here comes a boy in a warm woolly scarf, an arm. For my snowman, he says with a laugh. I'm not an arm. Can nobody see? I'm Stickman. I'm Stickman, that's me. Will I ever get back to the family tree? Stickman is lonely. Stickman is lost. Stickman is frozen and covered in frost. Stickman is weary. His eyes start to close. He stretches and yawns and lies down for a dose. He can't hear the bells or the sweet singing choir or the voice saying, here's a good stick for the fire. Stickman is lying asleep in the grate. Can anyone wake him before it's too late? He dreams of his kids and his stick lady love, then suddenly wakes. What's that noise up above? It starts as a chuckle, then turns to a shout. Oh, 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 I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Help me out. A stuck man? A stuck man? Now who could that be? Don't worry, cries Stickman. I'll soon set you free. A scratch and a flurry of so, a wiggle and jiggle and out pokes a foot. A show and a notch, a hop and a jump, and Santa falls into the room with a thump. Stickman, oh Stickman, you excellent friend, thanks, thanks a million, thanks without end. Then Stickman helps Santa deliver the toys. 
to fast asleep girls and to fast asleep boys. Faster and faster they fly through the snow, till Santa says, only one chimney to go. Stick Lady is lonely. The children are sad. It won't feel like Christmas without their stick dad. They toss and they turn in the family bed. But what is that clattering sound overhead? Someone is tumbling into the house. Is it a bird? Or a bat? Or a mouse? Or could it? Yes. Could it just possibly be? I'm Stickman. I'm Stickman. I'm Stickman. That's me. And I'm sticking right here in the family tree. The Gruffalo by Julia Donaldson, read by Anna Green. A mouse took a stroll through the deep, dark wood. A fox saw the mouse, and the mouse looked good. Where are you going to, little brown mouse? Come and have lunch in my underground house. Well, it's terribly kind of you, fox, but no. I'm going to have lunch with a Gruffalo. A Gruffalo? What's a Gruffalo? A Gruffalo? Why? Didn't you know? He has terrible tusks and terrible claws and terrible teeth in his terrible jaws. Where are you meeting him? Well, here by these rocks. And his favorite food is roasted fox. Roasted fox? I'm off, fox said. Goodbye, little mouse. And away he sped. <laughs> Silly old fox, doesn't he know? There is no such thing as a Gruffalo. On went the mouse through the deep dark wood. An owl saw the mouse, and the mouse looked good. Ooh, 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 ooh. Where are you going to, little brown mouse? Come and have tea in my treetop house. <sighs> it's terribly kind of you, owl, but no. I'm going to have tea with a Gruffalo. Ooh, ooh, a Gruffalo? What's a Gruffalo? Um, a Gruffalo. Why? Didn't you know? He has knobbly knees and turned out toes and a poisonous wart at the end of his nose. Ooh, ooh, where are you meeting him? Here by this stream and his favorite food is owl ice cream. Owl ice cream? Tutti be woo! Goodbye, little mouse! And away owl flew. <laughs> Silly old owl, doesn't he know? There is no such thing as a Gruffalo. On went the mouse through the deep dark wood. A snake saw the mouse, and the mouse looked good. Tss, where are you going to, little brown mouse? Come for a feast in my log pile house. <laughs> it's terribly kind of you, snake. But no, I'm having a feast with a Gruffalo. A Gruffalo? What's a Gruffalo? Well, a Gruffalo, why, didn't you know? His eyes are orange. His tongue is black. He has purple prickles all over his back. Where are you meeting him? Well, here by this lake, and his favorite food is scrambled snake. Scrambled snake, it's time I hate. Goodbye, little mouse. And away snakes lead. <laughs> Silly old snake. Doesn't he know there is no such thing as a gruffalo? But who is this terrible creature with terrible claws and terrible teeth in his terrible jaws? He has nobly knees and turned out toes and a poisonous wart at the end of his nose. His eyes are orange, his tongue is black. He has purple prickles all over his back. Oh, help! Oh, no! It's Gruffalo!
<laughs> My favorite food, the Gruffalo said. You'll taste good on a slice of a bread. Good, said the mouse. Don't call me good. I'm the scariest creature in this wood. Just walk behind me and soon you'll see. Everyone is afraid of me. <laughs> All right, said the Gruffalo, bursting with laughter. You go ahead and I follow you after. They walked and walked till the Gruffalo said, I hear a hiss in the leaves ahead. It's a snake, said the mouse. Why, snake, hello? Snake took one look at the Gruffalo. Oh, crumbs! He said, goodbye, little mouse, and off he slid to his log pile house. You see, said the mouse, I told you so. Amazing, said the Gruffalo. They walked some more till the Gruffalo said, I hear a hoot in the trees ahead. It's an owl, said the mouse. Why, owl, hello. Owl took one look at the Gruffalo. Oh dear, oh, oh. He said, goodbye, little mouse, oh, oh. and off he flew to his treetop house. You see, said the mouse, I told you so. Astounding, said the Gruffalo. They walked some more, till the Gruffalo said, I can hear feet on the path ahead. Ah, it's a fox, said the mouse. Why, fox, hello! Fox took one look at the Gruffalo. Oh, help, he said. Goodbye, little mouse. And off he ran to his underground house. Well, Gruffalo, said the mouse, you see, everyone is afraid of me. But now my tummy is beginning to rumble. My favorite food is... Gruffalo crumble. Gruffalo crumble, the Gruffalo said. And quick as a wind, he turned and fled. All was quiet in the deep, dark wood. The mouse found a nut, and the nut was good. The End Gruffalo's Child by Julia Donaldson The Gruffalo said that no Gruffalo should ever set foot in the deep, dark wood. Why not? Why not? Because if you do, the big bad mouse will be after you. I met him once, said the Gruffalo. I met him a long, long time ago. What does he look like? Tell us, Dad. Is he terribly big and terribly bad? I can't quite remember, the Gruffalo said. Then he thought for a minute and scratched his head. The big bad mouse is terribly strong, and his scaly tail is terribly long. His eyes are like pools of terrible fire, and his terrible whiskers are tougher than wire. One snowy night, when the Gruffalo snored, the Gruffalo's child was feeling bored. The Gruffalo's child was feeling brave, so she tiptoed out of the Gruffalo's cave. The snow fell fast and the wind blew wild. Into the wood went the Gruffalo's child. Aha! Aha! A trail in the snow. Whose is this trail and where does it go? A tail poked out of a log pile house. Could this be the tail of the big bad mouse? Out slid the creature. His eyes were small and he didn't have whiskers. No, none at all. You're not the mouse. Not. I, said the snake, he's down by the lakes, eating Gruffalo cakes. 
The snow fell fast, and the wind blew wild. I'm not scared, said the Gruffalo's child. Aha! Oho! Marks in the snow! Whose are these claws, Marks? Where do they go? Two eyes gleamed out of the tree top house. Could this be the eyes of the big bad mouse? Down flew the creature. His tail was short, and he didn't have whiskers of any sort. You're not the mouse. Toot toot, no I. But he's somewhere nearby, eating Gruffalo's pie. The snow fell fast, and the wind blew wild. I'm not scared, said the Gruffalo's child. Aha! Aho! A track in the snow. Who's in this track, and where does it go? Whiskers at last, and an underground house. Could this be the home of the big bad mouse? Out slunk the creature. His eyes were in fury. His tail wasn't scaly. His whiskers weren't weary. You're not the mouse. Oh no, not me! He's under tree drinking Gruffalo tea. It's all a trick," said the Gruffalo's child, as she sat on a stump where the snow lay piled. I don't believe in the big bad mouse. But here comes a little one out of his house. Not big, not bad, but a mouse at least. Aha! You'll taste good as a midnight feast. Wait," said the mouse. "Before you eat, there's a friend of mine that you ought to meet. If you'll let me hop on on a hazel twig, I'll become my friend so bad and big." The Gruffalo's child unclenched her fist. The big bad mouse. So he does exist. The mouse hopped into the hazel tree. He beckoned, then said, "Just wait and see." Out came the moon. It was bright and round. A terrible shadow fell onto the ground. Who is this creature so big, bad, and strong? His tail and his whiskers are terribly long. His ears are enormous, and over his shoulder, he carries a knot as big as a boulder. The big bad mouse! Yelled the Gruffalo's child. The mouse jumped down from the twig and smiled. Aha! Oho! Prints in the snow. Whose are these footprints? Where do they go? The footprints. Led to the Gruffalo cave, where the Gruffalo's child was a bit less brave, where the Gruffalo child was a bit less bored, and the Gruffalo snored, and snored, and snored. The end.